بسم الله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد أيها الأحباب Continue on in our study of Shara Sunnah by Imam Barbahari, the abridged, uh, abridged uh, <coughs> treatise. We reach the fourth point by Imam uh, Barbahari where he said, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, وقال عمر بن الخطاب رضي الله رحمه الله لا عذر لأحد في ضلالة رقبها حسبها هدى ولا في هدى تركه حسبه ضلالة فقد بينت الأمور وثبتت الحجة وانقطع العذر وذلك أن السنة والجماعة والجماعة قد أحكم أمر الدين كله وتبين للناس فعلى الناس الاتباع Imam Babahari rahimahullah ta'ala said he said the foundation or he said uh, he mentioned an ather of Umar Umar bin al-Khattab radiyallahu ta'ala anhu said there is no excuse for anyone going astray thinking that he is upon guidance nor for abandoning guidance, thinking it to be misguidance. Since the affairs have been made clear, the proof established, and the excuse cut off, that is because the sunnah and the jama'ah have cons been consolidated and safeguarded all of the religion. They've made clear all of the religion. It has been made clear to the people, so it is upon the people to comply and follow. That is a very important qaida, uh, a, a, a principle in, with the salaf, is that when they heard the nasus, the text of the Quran and the sunnah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, that they just, they made taslim. They accepted. They accepted it. They didn't debate it. They didn't fight it with their desires. They didn't say, well, you know, it might mean this, my heart is inclined towards this, I feel this way, but we do it this way. They didn't fight and argue, but they accepted the nasus. This is the, the minhaj of the salaf, and may Allah bless us with ikhlas, with sabad, and bless us to be like that in our iman, to where we accept the evidences when they are presented to us from kitab Allah wa sunnah to rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, according to the faham of the salaf of this ummah. Uh, with regards to this narration, the many scholars or some of the some of the early scholars mentioned this in their books, but without isnad, without the chain of narration, uh, without the chain of narrators, and uh, it was reported in Ibn Batta by Ibn Batta in Ibn al Kubra by the way of Uzai, that it reached him that Umar bin al-Khattab radiallahu ta'ala anhu said it. However, its chain is munqati'. So its chain is disconnected. It's not a connected chain of narration. Uh, I want to briefly read some fawaid, some benefits from Shaykh Rabi hafidhullah ta'ala uh, regarding this because he was very concise in discussing this and gave some very beneficial uh Ta'liqat or uh, comment, uh, he commented very briefly on this and, and gave some very nice and beneficial uh, examples for us. So after discussing the fact that the chain of narration, the chain of narrators, that it's munqati', you know, that it's disconnected, he mentioned from the meaning of this athar, he said, فَإِنْ ثَبَتَ عَنْهُ So if it is uh, found to be authentic on him, then فَيَحْمُلْ عَلَى مُعْرِدْ الَّذِي لَا يُرِيدُ أَنْ يَعْلَمُ الْحَقِّ مِنَ الْبَاطِلِ وَالْهُدَى مِنْ ضلال. He said, so if it is found to be a sound narration on Umar ibn al-Khattab رضي الله تعالى عنه, then the meaning, then it is applicable to the person who denies the, the, den denies the haq, 
You know, this is the person who does not want to know the truth for, and distinguish it from falsehood and guidance from misguidance. So this is how the applicability of that narration, if it were declared to be sound, then this is how we would apply it. Then he mentions, وَأَمَّا مَنْ يُرِيدُ الْحَقِّ وَيُحِبُّهُ فَيَقْتَعَ فِي فِي ضَلَالٍ فَإِنْ كَانَ مِنَ الْمُجْتَاهِدِينَ وَبَدَلَ الْأَقْصَى الْجُهْدِهِ لِلْوَصُولِ إِلَى الْحَقِّ فَلَمْ يَهْدِ فَلَمْ يَهْتِ يَهْتِدْ فَلَمْ يَهْتِدِ إِلَيْهِ فَهَذَا يُصَدَّقْ عَلَيْهِ قَوْلٌ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ إِذَا حَكَمَ الْحَاكِمُ فَاجْتَهَدَ ثُمَّ أَصَابَ فَلَهُ أَجْرَانِ وَإِذَا حَكَمَ فَاجْتَهَدَ ثُمَّ أَخْطَأَ فَلَهُ أَجْرٌ So the Sheikh said, he mentioned the other case, he said, as for the one who wants the truth, and they, uh, and they love it, and uh, he, he wants to uh, separate himself or dismember misguidance and stay away from misguidance, and if he is one of those people who is a person, a mujtahid, you know, a person who, who strives uh, and is rightfully, you know, a scholar who uh, fits a criterion of ijtihad, and that they strive to gain the truth in an issue, he strives his utmost to, to gain the truth. But he is not favored to be guided with regards to that issue. Then this person falls under the statement of the Messenger of Allah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam who said that if a judge or a scholar uh, makes a ruling or a judgment and he strives in it, فَاجْتَهِدَ then he gets the issue correct, then he receives two reward. Two rewards. And if he strives, uh, if he makes a judgment, and he strove his utmost, but he made a mistake in that judgment, then he receives one reward. So the scholars mention this narration also to show, and then the sheikh mentions, وَهَذَا الْأَجْرَ الْوَاهِدْ لِلْمُجْتَاهِدَ الْمُخْتِي هُوَ مُقَابَلْ إِجْتِهَادِهِ وَيُعْذَرَهُ اللَّهُ فِي خَطِيهِ he said, and then this uh, reward, this single reward, for the one who made ijtihad, who, you know, who's ahlan for ijtihad. We're not just talking about someone who's ignorant or just anyone making uh, ijtihad. This is a very serious uh, level, requires it's a, very, uh, it's a very serious issue, and it requires ilm and fiqh, and there are conditions that the scholars mention regarding ijtihad. And then, of course, there's also situations. For example, if you were in a situation where you uh, have some knowledge and you're the only one amongst your people, you're in a village somewhere, you know, very far where there's no scholars and there's no one, but you are the most knowledgeable in that situation. Then, of course, and you have no contact really with the outside world, you can't get on the phone and just call the scholars or what have you, then of course you make ijtihad there, then bi'idnillah, then this would apply to you as well. But this would be the situation where the person, you know, they have no other option. So the conditions for ijtihad are, you'll find in the books of Usul of Fiqh and, and those books related to that science, are related to those people who are ahlan for ijtihad. It's not just even for any scholar. It's for those people who, who Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has favored. As far as considering someone a really mujtahid, you know, this is a, a very high level of, of, of ilm and fiqh. Going back to the main point here that the Shaykh is mentioning though, he said, al ajr al wahid lil mujtahid al mukhti hu maqabal ijtihadi. He said, and then this re single reward for the one who is the mujtahid who makes a mistake, this is, uh, you know, his reward is related to his ijtihad because he strove, because he made sincere effort. And Allah excuses him for his mistake. وَقَدْ عَلَّمَ اللَّهُ عِبَادِهِ عِبَادَهُ 
أن يدعوه فيقولوا ربنا لا تؤاخذنا إن نسينا أو أخطأنا وقال كما في الحديث الصحيح قد فعلت so then the sheikh said حفظ الله تعالى he said and Allah subhanahu wa taala knows the uh, has taught his slave the supplication which is mentioned in the Quran in Surah Al-Baqarah uh, to say Rabbana la tu'akhidna in nasina o akhtana o o our Lord do not hold us accountable if we have uh, uh, we have forgotten something or we have made a mistake you know for our, for our forgetting forgetfulness and our mistakes this is a beautiful and it shows the rahmah of Allah Azza wa Jal that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taught his slaves this beautiful dua that we should say and it's from the Quran it's a nas of the Quran surah al-Baqarah showing the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you know we're begging Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to not hold us accountable for our mistakes and for our those things we did out of forgetfulness and in a sahih hadith it's mentioned that along with this that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says qad fa'altu that I I have done that meaning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala out of his infinite grace and mercy and favor has forgiven us for those things we've done out of mistakes and we've done out of uh, out of forgetfulness so let's just see let's look at an, an issue for example maybe you have someone and this is why we should be merciful with one another with regards to mistakes we're not talking about somebody who, whose usul is built on mistakes that their whole foundation that they're built upon bida and khurafat and 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 so forth but we're talking about those people possibly a brother or sister from ahl sunnah and they have uh made a mistake in an issue or a slip of the tongue this happens all the time during khutbas uh during lectures the mashayikh this happens to the mashayikh so what about the students of knowledge what about the dua that they're speaking and maybe he's speaking and he's going and he makes a mistake on his tongue maybe even a serious mistake i've i've seen uh, in khutbas where sometimes uh one student of knowledge who was giving the khutbah the sheikh entrusted him to give him give the khutbah on his behalf because the sheikh traveled uh and he made a serious mistake in the khutbah to hajj or it was right after that i can't recall and i and, and it, i believe it was from nervousness and it was a mistake and bi idnillah is forgiven for that or sometimes in a khutbah yourself you may find that you make a mistake something serious that is a even a statement of kufr you might say especially when dealing with the arabic language say something like uh that allah was created by his servant wa iyad billah min dhalika and that's a severe state that's a statement of kufr it takes you out of the fold of islam that if you say allah was created but what you meant to say just the difference between the dhamma in the fatha here that you made this kalima you made it uh uh you 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 made Allah uh, the when pronounce when mentioning Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that you you didn't make it murfu' you know with a dhamma but instead you you made it uh uh miftuh with a uh a fatha and that changed the whole meaning that means that Allah was created by a servant but in rather it should be Allah should be murfu' left the jalala should be murfu' it should be have a dhamma you should say Allah خلق عباده that his his servant should, should that should be mansub it should have a fatha and uh meaning that it's the maf'ul bihi that it is the thing that the action happened to so allah created his servant so something simple as that can be a kalimah to kufr but did the person mean that of course not did the person uh say it out of maybe out of nervousness out of a quick on the tongue or slight on the tongue but in the law this is the case and this happens it happens very frequently so that's why we should be cautious even with one another's mistakes getting back to what the sheikh said 
Hafizullah Ta'ala. And then he said, وَإِن كَانَ جَاهِلًا وَهُوَ يُحِبُّ الْحَقِّ وَيُرِيدُهُ وَلَكِنْ لَمْ يَجِدْ مِنْ مَنْ يَدِلُّهُ عَلَى الْحَقِّ وَلَمْ يَهْتَدِ وَلَمْ يَهْتَدِ إِلَيْهِ بِنَفْسِهِ كَحَدِيثِ أَحْدَ بِالْإِسْلَامِ أَوْ مَنْ يَنْشَأَ فِي بَادِيَةِ بَعِيدَةٍ فِي بَادِيَةِ بَعِيدَةِ عَنْ أَحْلِ الْعِلْمِ فَهَذَا يُعْذِرُهُ اللَّهِ لِجَهْلِهِ كَمَا قَرَرَ ذَلِكَ الْعُلَمَاءِ The Shaykh then mentioned, Hafizullah Ta'ala, he mentioned the other situation, that if, uh, what if a person is ignorant? He said, if a person is ignorant, but he loves the truth, and he wants the truth, however, he did not find anyone to teach him it, or to show him the truth, and he wasn't guided to it by himself, and this is like the situation, he gives some situations here, now some examples. Like the person who's new to Islam, or the person who was raised or grew up in a, uh, a small village very far from the scholars. And this is as we mentioned. And the scholars mention this constantly in the, the books of Fiqh, and, and even some of the books of Aqidah, regarding those people who are excused by ignorance, and when it comes especially to the issues of tekfir and, and the excuses for not making tekfir of someone, you know, other bijahil if they're ignorant, or this, and this fits under this, a person who's new to Islam. Imam Noah, he speaks extensively uh, about this in, I believe, his book, Minhaj uh, al uh, or or something like this. It's a book in fiqh, so you can find it there. And in, in many, many of the books you'll find written about this, this topic. And the point being that a person who's ignorant as well can be excused. But there are excuses for a different reason. Their other have the other be jahil. They're, they're excused due to their ignorance. The mujtahid, the mujtahid, the one who has ilm and fiqh, but he made a mistake in an issue and in a judgment. That, that was not based on his desires, of course, then this one is excused for his ijtihad. He's excused for another reason, because he strove his best and he, he didn't have the tawfiq from Allah in getting the haq. But the other person was excused due to their ignorance. They didn't, they didn't really have a chance because they didn't have the knowledge, they weren't exposed to knowledge, they don't have people around them who have knowledge to teach them. So they made statements that they shouldn't have made. Or they, uh, whatever the, the situation and action that they did, that uh, they did it out of ignorance. Then, in the law, they're excused. They're excused due to their ignorance. And the ulama speak extensively about this, as we mentioned in their books. And then the sheikh said, Wallah yaqul, wa man yashakika rasoola min ba'di ma tabayna lahu huda." ويتبع غير سبيل المؤمنين نوله ما تولى ونسله جهنم وساءت مصيرا. He mentioned the ayat in Surah An-Nisa where Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala says في كتاب الكريم in this ayat he says Subhanahu wa Ta'ala whoever uh, differs with the messenger after the truth uh, after guidance has been made clear to him and he follows a path other than the Sabil al Mu'minin. And remember, we said the Sabil al Mu'minin is the Sabil of the Sahabas, the Sabil al Sunnah, Sabil al Ahl Sunnah, Satariq al Sunnah. Then, Nawalihi ma tawalla, then we'll give him to those, uh, those people who he loved or he followed, and, his, uh, and he'll be uh, roasted in the hellfire. And what an evil destination or an evil abode. وعياذ بالله من ذلك. Then the Sheikh says, وهذا جاهل المحب للحق لا ينطبق عليه هذا ذم والوعيد وإنما ينطبق على من لا يريد الحق ويتبع هواه. This is very important, and this was the last little uh, sentence the Sheikh made here regarding this uh, this section of the treaties. Very beneficial. So after that ayat, he said, and this is for, uh, or he, he said, 
And the, the person who is ignorant, who loves the truth, then we do not apply, this ayat does not apply to them. And that, that sin and that um, threat of punishment. Verily, this applies, this verse applies to those who do not want the haq. They do not want the haq. And they follow their desires. So the shaykh here, Hafid Allah Ta'ala, is making it clear for us that we have to be cautious about following our desires in any issue, in any issue, especially with regards to the deen. That we should not, we should not say, well, Shaykh so-and-so said, and I'm just going to blindly follow. Especially if you have enough knowledge to be able to research into the issue. And this is uh, advice to myself and advice to others that, you know, if a person, especially students of knowledge, they should not be running around just blind following everything because you will never end with all the fitna that's going on with all the, the issues between personalities, between du'at, between imams, between mashayikh. So if a student of knowledge has the ability, they know the Arabic language, they know, they've studied, not just knowing the Arabic language, but they've studied with the Mashiach and they know these principles, especially per per pertinent to the issue at hand, then it's upon them to look for the truth. They can't just say, well, I like this sheikh more, so his, his, his statement has to be the haq, it's, it covers that. Unless they're just muqallid. If they're muqallid, okay, la bas, you know then as long as they don't force other people to be make taqlid of their view. But the point is that if a person has the ability to go into the books, to go back to those kawaii, to, to, to sit and speak to the ulama about those issues, then they, they should make bath, especially before pe speaking and just taking positions and attacking others. So it's imperative that we realize that uh, the that following things based upon our desires is a very dangerous thing. And likewise, those people who just make taqlid. For example, I recall a situation in the masjid once I mentioned with a brother, and he's a staunch, in, in my, my area, he's a staunch uh, supporter and one of the heads of Jamaat Tabliq in this particular masjid. You know, that's his Jamaat. And I mentioned something, he mentioned a hadith, which was fabricated hadith in Sheikh al-Albani, Rahimahullah Ta'ala mentioned. So I mentioned, I shared this with the brother, and he said, my dear respected brother, uh, we, I don't take from modern scholars, basically what he said. I don't take from modern scholars, you know, and so he, you know, that was a very ignorant statement because Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala says, and he knows more Quran than me, but what, the, 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 the understanding is not there. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Kitab al kareem ask the people of knowledge uh, if, if, if you do not know. If you don't know, ask those, those who know. Ask the people of knowledge. So, that lets us know that the people of Ilm will be around for us. The Prophet ﷺ said, لا تزول طائفتهم من أمتي ظالين الحق he said, there won't cease to be a group from my, my community, from my nation, who will continue to be on the truth. And some of the, the scholars, they said, and I don't know who this fits to more than Ahl Hadith. So Ahl Hadith will be mojud. The scholars will be there. The fuqaha are, they are here. We have scholars of fiqh and jurisprudence and all of the funun. We have them. So ask if you don't know. Ask the people of knowledge. There's no excuse. And going back to the meaning of that, that afar, which uh, we just read of uh, that was narrated on Umar radiallahu ta'ala anhu, letting us know that the, 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 the affairs have been made clear in the meaning, the meaning is sahih. The meaning is sahih. The fish, the, you know, there's so much Qur Quranic adilla to show us that the affairs have been made clear. The deen has been perfected. Allah has made the religion uh, perfect and, and completed it. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent the Messenger وسلم, to make it clear. To, to make clear for the people. So the Sunnah explains the Quran and it, and it makes clear what may not be apparent in meaning for us just from the Quran. It's made clear in the Sunnah, the Prophet. Alayhi
And then we have the minhaj of the Salaf. All those things, they make clear for us. So it, it, it's, it's clear, it's established. However, it's, un, it's upon us to understand, to strive to get the truth, and not just follow our desires, that we have to seek. We have to seek knowledge. We have to better ourselves. So that way, we at least we have some tools to be able to distinguish haq, between haq and batil. Because if you remain in the same state of ignorance, that you don't learn the Arabic language. And it's very important. I want to advise myself and my brothers and sisters to learn Arabic. Okay? Advise myself to improve in my Arabic. Advise my brothers and sisters who don't know Arabic to learn Arabic. Very important. It lifts a, a very... Uh, it, 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 especially, you know, it's a, a basic key to begin. It opens the door. It opens the door to a whole world. You, you can't get most of these books here in English. You can get some of them, well, alhamdulillah, and some benefit, but you can't get these shurahat, these explanations of the ahadith and, and explanations of the book that we're studying. You know, some of it's translated for us. But you don't really get, you need the Arabic language to get to these texts. And to understand those texts, then you need the Arabic language to go to the scholars to, to learn how to understand these texts. So all of that, there's a, there's a whole minhaj, there's a whole path, and it only comes through ilm and study. Otherwise, we remain in a helpless state where we're always dependent upon others and their mistakes. Because you lose things in translation. You know, I'm doing the best that I can to translate, and I'm trying to give you the Arabic and the English. You know, not always I'm going to give you the Arabic. Sometimes the English, if I can find it or if I spend time pre preparing, giving you the English ahead of time. Or if I find it elsewhere. But you lose things in translation. In addition to that, it also depends on the accuracy of the translator. Another issue is translation, that's not sufficient because you need a well-rounded, as far as being a student, you need to be well-rounded. You need to be able to ask questions. You need to be able to go, because there are many things. What do you think? The Arabs don't, it's not like they, even they read the shurahat of the same, of the mashayikh. It isn't as if they're going to understand every issue. So what about us who are culturally very different in the West? Extremely different. Linguistically, very different. All of those issues, the issues of language and culture come in and in translation. We lose so much. And there's so much things that will be more relevant to us. And that's why you have to, you need to gain the language. And the Prophet wasallam said, Man khayran, Whenever Allah gives uh, what's good for a person, He gives them understanding of the religion. And we ask Allah the Almighty to accept our good and forgive our evil and bless us with fiqh fi deen. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.